Hi there butterfly watchers. I don't know about you but where I live the butterfly season's starting to wind down and this afternoon looking at the color of the leaves I'm starting to get excited about birding. Not that I don't watch birds all season but I really love butterfly season. Anyway it's time to sit back and, and uh, you know reflect on the season that uh, that's just happened. And for me, one of the big themes was nets, butterfly nets. People asking me uh, about the place of nets in butterfly studies. Are they really necessary? Aren't they kind of old fashioned? We've got all this, this uh, great equipment in terms of binoculars and cameras and so on now. My view is, yes, we have superb stuff when it comes to the close focusing binoculars and the macro focusing cameras. Uh, it's great and I, I've, had, I've had wonderful times pursuing butterflies with that kind of equipment and nothing else. On the other hand, there are great things to be said about nets. Net benefits as we call them. For one thing, nets are inexpensive. Even the, the, uh, the least expensive, decent, close focusing binoculars that I've used, uh, the Pentax Papilios, I think I paid about 140 for my pair. Uh, a camera that, that'll do a good job uh, with butterflies, yeah, it's gonna start you at about $300, and so it starts to add up. Even a professional net is a fraction of that cost, and you can, of course, make your own nets. You can get them for almost free. My first net was made of a hockey stick, a coat hanger, and part of my mom's old nightgown. Give that a try. So there's, there's that. There's also the fact that for a large group of people, you want to introduce them to butterflies, it's so much easier to hand out a bunch of nets and, uh, and have people examine the butterflies in the hand. Uh, it, it, it's harder to get people to appreciate them at a distance. And that's especially true for kids. Kids like things that they can uh, get up close and personal with. Looking through optics at something far away and looking for fiddly points, that's a mature adult skill. And many of us are kind of still a bit of a kid at heart. So that's another benefit of, uh, of nets. Here's Katie Prudick, pardon me, Dr. Kathleen Prudick, the US coordinator for eButterfly, she's going to show us how she catches, examines, and releases butterflies unharmed in the field with a net. All right, sometimes when you, when you are trying to identify a butterfly, using your binoculars and staring at the upper and lower surfaces just isn't enough. It doesn't give you enough information. So sometimes you have to capture them and look at them up close and really study them. So you just saw right there where I caught a butterfly using my aerial net. And this butterfly is now at the bottom of my net right here. And the technique for catching a butterfly safely is to have a big swing. You want to push the butterfly to the end of the net. And then to close the net, you twist your wrist over. If you don't do that twist, what's going to happen is the net opening is going to remain open and the butterfly is going to fly away, which will make you feel like a total goofball. So to avoid goofball, remember, twist the wrist. Okay, so I've got this butterfly in my net and I want to have a closer look to help me in the identification. So if we look here, where'd he go? Oh. Sometimes they are difficult, so we're going to try to get them in the bottom of the net again. Oh, there he is. He's really at the bottom. So I'm angling my net so he will crawl upwards and face his head upwards, because that's how we're going to grab him. Um, in order to secure him before I open up the net, I pinch down his wings against the net. And it's just something to remember, I am not harming the butterfly. The wings actually are dead. There's no hemolymph or blood throwing flowing through them. 
Um, I may get a few scales on my fingers or on my net. That's okay. It's not going to hurt the butterfly at all. It won't hurt their ability to fly. It won't hurt their ability to find a mate. And it won't hurt their ability to feed. Okay, here we go. I'm going to open up my net. My butterfly is secure. I'm going to pop its head out so I can see it. And I'm looking at it. I'm checking it out. She's checking me out. You can see the eyes and the antenna and the legs. All right, now I'm going to gently grab the butterfly right at the base of the head and the thorax, let go of the wings, and this way I can really examine those colors and patterns on both the underside and the upper side. So here's the underside. Now you're like, how are you going to look at the upper side really like well? Well, you're going to blow on the abdomen. and it should open up the wings. There you go, so you can see them. Um, and so you're looking at the color, the pattern, the shape of the wings. That will help you with your identification, just getting a better feel for what species this is. This happens to be a common ringlet, Ceonymphatulia. Very nice little bug. All right, when you're done with your identification, when you're done with just looking how beautiful they are, you can just gently Put them on your hand or just let them go. They will often just sit there, kind of wait. So they don't seem scared at all. All right, to get them to move, if you feel so inclined, you just gently blow on them. And off they go. There you go. That's how you catch and identify a butterfly. Marvelous. And about the only thing I can add to that is that um, some people prefer to use uh, blunt tipped forceps to spread the wings and examine uh, the butterfly in the hand before letting, letting it go. And others prefer a glass jar or a small bottle and look at the butterfly through the glass. Give it a try. Try all these techniques and please don't worry that you're going to do any harm. Uh, it's vastly less harmful to the butterflies than fishing is to fish, even if you catch and release fish, which is another thing that I'll admit I do from time to time. Now here's Zach McDonald, butterfly enthusiast and tennis instructor, to help you with the more athletic aspects of the butterfly net. So I realize it's winter time and that everything that's beautiful is about to die, but that doesn't mean that the fun has to stop. You guys can practice in your basement on your ping pong balls or budgies or whatever you got floating around the house, okay? So remember that the key to good butterfly catching and the key to good tennis is fast footwork, okay? So you're getting your body in the right position to make that forehand or that backhand swing to catch that Lepidoptera. Some people prefer a two-handed backhand. I'm more of a one-handed backhand guy, but Regardless, if the butterflies are flying high above your head, you're going to need to resort to the overhead smash catch, okay? So this one, I'm reaching up and trying to get that full extension as high as I can. On second thought, that might not be one you should practice in your basement. You probably don't have the clearance, or maybe you don't even have a basement. So get out in the snow, and I'll see you in the springtime. Aha! So there you go, and thanks so much for, uh, for listening. Um, I hope you get out there, enjoy the butterflies, uh, whatever season it happens to be when you watch this video, and do consider submitting your records and observations, maybe your photographs to eButterfly. The database is getting bigger and bigger and more and more interesting for everyone. It's, uh, it's your database, it's my database, it's everyone's database, and uh, happy times with the butterflies to you.